So what we'll be talking about today is um, the canonical forms of equations. And this is effectively a standard forms is a good way to think of it. So we're putting it into a generic form that everyone will always have the same form of it. Because obviously, as we've shown, there's many ways of reducing the equations and you can end up with different Boolean equations that are effectively the same. Um, and a second aspect of it is that when we design logic circuits, frequently what you'll have is um, you have some box and you have some inputs to it and you may have frequently have more than one output, but here let's just say we have a single input. Um, and you don't care how the gates work or anything like that. All you know is you have this truth table um, and you have, say, A, B, C as the inputs, and when the inputs are certain combinations, the output should be engaged, or true, or high. Um, so here, for example, I have this where if the input is basically two or lower, the output's off. If the input's three or higher, the output's on. So it's some function that I need. Um, and how we go about designing this is actually we consider... For each case, um, the sort of most simplest way or most straightforward way to design it is simply to say that I will look at every single input and design logic such that um, the output is in the state I want for that group of bits. And to do this, we use two things, either min terms or max terms, they're called. So just clear this. When we use min terms, what we're doing um, is effectively using an AND gate for each possibility here to generate the, um, the output we want. So, or the complement of the output, sorry, yeah. So, for example, if I have, um, if I have this circuit here, I can go to each possible output. I'm just going to skip ahead here. Um, I have each of the possible, each of the output values written for each of the inputs. And when we use a min term, what we're saying is that this is what I have to do to the inputs to get a result of one. Um, so we have, for example, here the input is 0, 1, 1. And we can see that the min term here is A complement, um, because A complement becomes 1, anded with B, anded with C. Uh, so for every other possible input, this min term will be 0, um, because for every other possible input, the result of that AND will be 0. It's only when A is 0, B is 1, and C is 1 that the output's 1. In a similar way, I say that for the input of um, binary decimal 4, the output is 1. So only for a, b, and c equal to 4 does the input here, the output here become 1. Um, so you see we have this notation we're using lowercase m for min term 3 is equal to a complement b, c. So when you see this notation, all it means is that the particular logic function at this point um, is high, so the output is 1, because m3 is there. Um, actually should. m3 is there. So what we do then is we just OR all of those uh, min terms. You can see at the bottom here. So the reason being that uh, the reason being that each individual midterm is only one um, for that requested input. So when we start with the truth table here, uh, we can use what we call this the sum of products form. So sum of products we can see is effectively just ORing um, all of those midterms, which is where the name comes from. So each midterm is a product, is the AND of the inputs, and then we OR all those min terms together. Um, and the end result is that you will have a Boolean function that
that exactly follows that truth table. So for example, um, the truth table given, there was ones when the input was binary three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so this means that we are using min term number three, four, five, six, seven. So if we want to uh, basically derive this, what we can do is write this out in a full form of each min term. Um, so this is M3, M4, M5, M6, and M7. Um, and when you look at these, the way you can see it is that um, this one is complemented, uh, so it becomes the input will be zero. Um, this one is not complemented, so the input's one, not complemented, the input's one. So that's telling you at what value of the input is that min term equal to one. Um, and using Boolean algebra, we just reduce this equation to the simplest form. So in this example, um, what we'll do, see, I'm just going to move forward. So in this example, what we'll do um, is we'll look for common terms. So that one will have no common terms. But for example, here we have A and B complement and C or with A and B complement and C without the complement. Um, so these two have some commonalities. So if I do um, A and B complement, we can then use the distributive principle to end up with C complement plus C. Um, and in a similar way, these last two terms have A and B as commonalities. And again, C complement plus C. Um, we know from the identities that C complement plus C or C plus C complement is equal to 1, uh, which means we can effectively just goes to 1, goes to 1. Um, so then if we write this, A complement and B and C, A and B, oops, like that. Um, so then what we can do is, um, again, we have a commonality here. We have A as a common factor in both these. Uh, so we'll, again, use the distributive principle to pull that out. Um, what we'll show tomorrow is you'll notice that there's a lot of commonalities here and finding those common terms and pulling them out is really how we're simplifying everything. So there's a faster way to do it, uh, which we'll use tomorrow as maps, basically. Uh, but for now, we'll just go through using the various Boolean algebra rules. So again, this goes to 1, and you're left with a complement B and C, and A. Um, and finally, what we're going to use is one of the simplification rules here. And when we apply these, you'll end up with B and C plus A. Uh, and where this comes from is when you look at them, it's effectively... Um, Unfortunately, because all the rules are using A and B in them as well, um, if you give the rules sort of this form, A prime, B prime. Um, so we're using the combination of B and C almost as if 
it's a single variable in um, this form here. Does it make sense or? Um, okay, here, I'll show you. I'll just erase this. So what it is is that um, So what it is is that we have here. We have A complement and B and C um, plus A. So we're actually effectively going to be using um, 22 here where this B and C is equal to A. Um, and where A complement is equal to B complement here, and A is equal to B here. Um, so when we apply it this way, we say because B and C occurs only once here, um, and then it's anded with the complement of a variable. And then that and we add to the original variable, just in this case, just A. Um, and this rule, number 22, is saying that's equivalent to this here, just plus A without A complement. Um, so you sort of have to look through them a bit to find these things. but. And there it is. Again, the, the whole written out version is on, will be on the slides. So that was some of products form. The second form we'll talk about is effectively the opposite. So product of sum. So here, when we go through and build everything up, what we'll be using is um, using a big AND gate effectively to AND a whole bunch of max terms together. Um, and so how this works is that every spot where there needs to be a zero, we have an equation um, using OR gates. And the way these are written, that only for the given inputs will that equation be zero. Uh, for everything else, it's one. So because it's contributing, contributing a zero to this AND equation, um, this product of some form, the output of the product of sum will be zero. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't actually know where the names come from. It's just, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, so for the max terms uh, in the product of sums form, it's simply pushing a zero somewhere. And wherever it pushes a zero, the output will be zero. For everything else, um, it'll be one because these OR equations, because uh, when you work through how they work, you can see that only in a single case will the output for be zero, and for every other input, it'll be one. Um, so again, using the exact same truth table we were designing for before, we can see that here, where the zeros are, we've written out the max terms, uh, which is 0, 1, and 2. Um, so again, when we say max term 2, you can think of that as uh, the binary inputs for sort of decimal 2, written in binary, is that max term. And at that point, there's a 0 at the output. Um, so if you're given only the max terms being used, for example, 
Uh, if you're only given this column without the outputs, you can just say everywhere there's a max term, the output's zero. Likewise, if you were just given min terms, everywhere min terms being used, the output's one. Um, so when we write it out in shorthand, what we'll use is um, this symbol, which is again just like the summation except product. Um, and we say, so the product of max terms zero, max terms one, and max terms two. Um, and when we write out the max terms, again, we have max term zero, max term one, max terms two. And when you have these max terms, which we'll represent with capital M, um, you can see that, for example, ABC, it's the opposite here. They're not complemented, so this is zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero. Um, and again, we can simplify it in a very similar way. Um, so if we write out A plus B um, here, and I'm just looking. And then we have the uh, we're sort of using the idea of this common term. So A and B are both common here, A and B are both common here. Um, and then we have the term at the end, which we won't deal with yet, as it doesn't have the same common. Um, so if we're given that, we know C and C complement is equal to zero by rule eight. So that just disappears, goes to zero. We have A or B or A plus B ended with A plus B complement plus C. Um, so then what we can do is see that we have a common term of A between the two of these. Um, so we can say A plus Oops, yeah, plus C, sorry. Um, so again, this is just pulling out that common term A here. So when you distribute it back, you'll get A plus B and then A plus B plus C, or B complement plus C, sorry. Um, and if we just go through and expand this a bit, you'll get B uh, and with B complemented, and then plus, again, we put B inside the brackets, B and C. Uh, again, B and B complement goes to zero, and at the end of the day, you're left with the exact same thing as before. So this was the same result as the sum of products, product of sums. This is what you expect. It's the exact same equation, just started in different ways, the same circuit. Um, so the canonical form is, um, sorry, yeah, the canonical form itself is only this, the product of sums or the sum of products. So it's the initial form um, when we show, the easiest way to represent it is the canonical forms will either be um, in product of sums form, which might be this, or might be each of them written out, or the sum of products forms, um, which again, the short form is that we'll use this, where we're just saying in term three, four, five, six, seven. Um, but the canonical form written out as an equation would be this, for example. Um, when you're asked to synthesize it, one wording you'll come into is the idea of two-level combinational logic. Um, all this means is that there's two levels of gates between the input and the output. So a two-level form, for example, this is level one. and this is level two. Um, the other aspect of it is you'll be told frequently that complements 
of the variables either are available or are not available. So if they are available, what this means is that when you draw your schematic, you can label the input to either A or A complement. You assume you have everything. Um, so in this case, for example, I have C complement. I don't have to show a not gate here because we just assume that we've provided them as part of the inputs. Um, so that's the sum of products and product of sum forms, um, which we call the canonical forms. Um, so that'll be important when we go to further simplify a lot of these Boolean uh, equations and schematics, uh, because this is how we sort of derive everything. So we start with a simple truth table in all of these, which is the inputs and the outputs. If we have more than one output, each output um, you would have effectively a separate truth table drawn for it. So if you have another you know, output Q and it has different requirements on it, um, in the exact same way that we have F or of ABC, we could have Q of ABC um, and it would be equal to whichever points that it's one here. So in this example, we have at zero, at one, three, four, five, and seven. So then you could say zero, one, three, four, five, seven. Um, and that would be the output Q. Uh, and again, we could just derive a circuit that created that output. A what gate, sorry? Uh, we, we use Q for something else later. Here I'm just using it as a random variable, so I'm just saying assume it's some output. Um, so when we say min terms, what we're talking about is the basically how we could create a term which is only one for that specific input case. Um, a max term is a term which is zero for that specific input case. So, for example, if we have min term number three, its output is one only uh, when ABC is binary three in this case. Uh, of course, when we say this, you have to make sure the ordering of these are the same way the problem is stating it. Uh, otherwise, you'll be screwed, more or less. Um, Max term three, the output is only zero for that given input. For every other case, it's one. So to combine min terms, we combine them in um, product, or to combine min terms, we combine them in sum of products form. Uh, sum of products meaning we or each of the min terms. And each of the min terms is a product because it's using AND gates. And then you can reduce it with the standard Boolean algebra that we've been using up until now. Product of sum um, uses max terms instead. So in this case, we have terms that are zero only for a specific input case. So only for zero, 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 this is zero. For everything else, it's one. We combine them effectively in a huge AND gate, so in products. Um, with the idea being that wherever a max term contributes a zero, the output is zero. So when we have M0, this is contributing a zero for input zero, 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 making the output zero, contributing this zero. Wherever it's not, there's no min term, so M max, or no max term, sorry, M3, et cetera, um, it's contributing a one. And so we'll use a short form for product of sums, um, where we use the basically product symbol here, and then say max term 0, 1, 2. You can then write that out um, in one of the canonical forms, the canonical forms being these initial forms that have all of the either max terms or min terms in it. So product of sum, this would be the product of sum forms. Uh, when you reduce it, it's no longer the product of some forms, but just a reduced form. Um, 
Likewise, the sum of products forms is just this initial state here. And when you synthesize it, if you're asked to put it into two-level combinational logic, it just means we have two levels of input logic. Uh, frequently, when you're asked to put it in two-level form, the question will explicitly say uh, either assume complements are available, which means you don't need to use not case or anything. Um, say the question hadn't said complements are available, this would mean you would need here to put a not gate in and then have the input C, um, but at this point it would effectively be three level logic because this would be level one. Um, these not gates, this would be two, this would be three. Um, so it, it's it's not that the AND and OR gates are together. Um, in this case it is, but it's more about we have the, we call it the level. So here we have the inputs directly A and B. Um, at this point, we effectively have just done one operation on any of the inputs, so A and B. Um, this could be an OR gate, it wouldn't matter. And it would be the same. So this is level one, um, just because it's directly operating on the inputs. Level two here is operating um, on another literal that we've created by combining the inputs. So here we've combined the inputs with AND gates, and then we're ORing it. Or here we've combined the inputs with OR gates, um, and then we're ORing it. So the levels are just telling you basically how deep you are in the logic. So. Yeah, exactly. So that's the good way of thinking of it. Um, so yeah, as I said, this was a quick class. Uh, it's fairly critical, the idea of these canonical forms, because we'll be building upon this a lot um, tomorrow and thereafter using mapping, which is a very fast way of producing sort of arbitrary logic design. So given just truth tables, we can design any type of logic, um, which we'll then be using to design all sorts of stuff. Okay, questions? Cool.